Look at the size of this place now. It's gigundous. And look what they put a table up here. Isn't that sweet? Somebody has sanded the seat down just recently. Boy, we could have lunch down there, couldn't we? These sails are crispy, fresh too. It's it's just as good as home. Are you kidding me? This this is fabulous. Hi there, this is Captain Q and my old sailing buddy Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. <laughs> Captain, you, uh, what are you digging out here? Ah, what are we, nuts? What are we doing out here? I'm just trying to find a place to sit down. Randy, whew. 1984, Nauticat. Okay. We like Nauticats, don't we? Uh, we like the 44 footer a whole lot. Oh yeah. Remember that puppy? Yeah. That was just like a living room. Now this is 33 feet, which sounds like a small boat, but look at the volume. Look at the uh, size of bilges, the height of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the top sides here. And there's a lot of boat here for 33 feet. This has got a long, long run uh, keel on it. Not a center border, but she's catch rigged, but she's all water lines. I think it's got about a 31 foot water line, which is a lot for a 37 foot boat. And a pretty shallow draft. And a pretty shallow, four, and a little over four feet. What's great about the big full keel? This is closer to a full keel, but it's not. When we talk full keel, that's going back to the old schooner days and things when the bow would come right down here and then turn and go aft. That's a full keel. These are still cut away here. And if you look down, you'll see the actual length of the display, the ballast. And that's all encapsulated. The lead down there is inside that long straight of a keel there. This boat is considered a motor sailor. That means it's gonna have probably twice the size of a motor you might normally have in a 33 footer. Uh, because the boat is going to probably reach just fine. She's catch rig, so we got two masts, but she's not going to go to weather very well. Okay. Uh, and so when you're cruising, and this happens to everybody, even those with slick, fast racing boats, they want to get from A to B, and the wind's coming from B, they're going to turn on their engine, yeah. and they're going to go. You turn this one on, and you're going to go really fast there. This will do... Uh, Oh, I don't want to get my numbers mixed up, but probably six, seven knots under power, dead into the wind, uh, somewhere up in that range. She's got a really large three-bladed prop back there. That prop is really well protected uh, with the trailing edge of the, of the keel, which also forms the bottom stability for the rudder itself. Bilges are full uh, and a lot of room for storage and fuel and so forth. Uh, and, and she's rounded. Again, we're not 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 like not a hard shine to it, and not a, a, a Blue Harbor a D model sort of build uh, where it goes right down to the bottom of the keel. You could go out with this boat and set the uh, uh, maybe a piece of the, the jib or and then the mizzen, leave the main down, don't even bother with it, and you know where you're going to be inside the wheelhouse. Happy as a clam. Let's head uh, north, okay? Sounds good. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing, so every little bit helps. Thanks again. Oh, Randy. Hey. Uh, I'm glad we, we really got that snowstorm below decks here. Uh, that was a little too breezy out there, but... This is the beauty right now we're enjoying of a motor sailor. If our, our fans remember, we did a Nauticat 44, didn't we? Yep. We were amazed at how much room that that boat at 44 feet had. We've been on an O'Day 34, remember? Yep. yep. It was a nice standard conventional boat. Uh, what else were we on? What was the International 500? What, she was, what, 30 feet or 32? 30, yeah. So, I was also thinking of the Coastal Cruiser. Oh ah, yes, right. The coastal cruiser is very apt as a comparison because, but you were quite in quite in a quite deep protected center cockpit, yeah. but it wasn't enclosed. No. Now here we are in seventh heaven today on a day like this. Boy, these are slides. There's one on each side, and they just slide right along. Boom, and they close right up and lock. Yeah. And that's sea proof and weatherproof, and easy to step right out into the waterways. 
to, uh, if you want to go forward or aft, here's your, remember they like wooden hand railings? Oh, yeah. Look at the massive size of the wooden tow rail down here. Oh, yeah. You like that, don't you? I do. We have uh, a very comfortable uh, wheelhouse here, and while the boats just say plowing along uh, under autopilot, you can sit in here and have lunch. Terrific 360 degree visibility. Uh, now, these boats are known to be good off the wind, reaching, catch rig, you can put enough sails up, uh, running, she'll go, uh, all right. But going to weather, let's face it, she's not a fin keel, she's heavy, she's blunt bowed, uh, so she's going to struggle. But she will go probably 35, 40 degrees of weather. But when you're cruising, cruisers don't go to weather, do they? No. They turn it up and they just punch right into the wind. And under here we have a 90 horsepower, um, I think it's a Ford Sabre, Ford Lehman maybe, uh, diesel engine. A huge three-bladed prop that we saw minutes ago. Yeah. And uh, it's, we're just going to go through anything. So I like this a lot. And one other little feature we discovered here, which is kind of fun, <clears throat> we found an extra cushion. And we said, where does this extra cushion go? And then this time, eagle-eyed Captain Q, not eagle-eyed Randy, nope. spotted this little piece that slides out. Oh, that's great. And here's the extra upholstery matching cushion. Now, look at the size of this place now. It's gigundous. Here's your controls. You can be steering the boat like so. Uh, you've got Ray Marine, set of Marine Marine gauges up here. And uh, there's an autopilot switch down here somewhere. Here's the electric windlass switch right on the side. So you probably don't even have to get out of the boat, out of the cabin to anchor this puppy. Uh, <clears throat> you've got your uh, compass set up forward here, which is in line with the helmsman. And nice, tidy uh, set of circuit breakers. And all, the, all, the, all the electrical panels right here for the helmsman. So the helmsman can navigate and what do we like? We like chart tables, don't we? Thank you. There we go. Oh. Pretty tidy. Pretty tidy. Randy. It's not all glory. It's no glory without suffering. Oh, not any <laughs> glory. This is ridiculous. Are you filming this? I might be filming you it. You better be filming it. <laughs> uh, While you're down there, check out how beautiful that teak is. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want to know about here? We got, <laughs> we got two helms and seats, <laughs> and there's a wheel. All right, I see the helms and seat, and there's a wheel. Oh, uh, look at that. Oh, that's the way I'm going. That's your uh, aft cabin? This is the aft cabin. Okay. And look what they put a table up here with a little leg for your sandwiches if you're sitting at the helm. Isn't that sweet? This is a catch rig. Here, here, here's the mizzen boom. Uh, there's a nice little sitting standing area back here. Really pretty amazing again for a 33 foot boat. There's your outboard motor bracket. Uh, place for your flag staff, for your ensign. And that's outboard of the catch rig boom, so it won't get hit. Nice big uh, stern light right underneath it. The teak is great. Somebody has sanded this teak down just recently. I want you to look at the wheel down here. Yeah. And I'm going to take this horseshoe, which is uh, self-destructing itself. If you turn around, swing forward, you really get a terrific view over the uh, pilot house and uh, all the way up on the deck. for this shot, but uh, I want you to notice that there's a 44-pound Bruce anchor and a 35-pound CQR plow right in front of you, <coughs> and a, uh, a Fortress Auxiliary anchor, too, is also on board. Uh, that's a, uh, uh, that um, uh, windlass right there is a Lumar H2, and you can control that up on the deck, or you can control it right here from the wheelhouse which is where I would control it today, for sure. <laughs>
Hi, Randy. Hello. <laughs> right when you get work. It's okay. a pretty nice bowsprit up here. And there's a nice bowsprit for you. Yeah, I think you'd like that. Uh, a roller furling Genoa up there. Beside you, one nice thing that's on this boat, Randy. Yeah. If you look to your, right on the port side, that ladder. Oh yeah. That's not just a regular ladder. That's a set of steps, and those, uh, those are really nice to walk up on a boat, especially one with high top sides like this boat. As you look aft, there's a nice center hatch uh, for the forward cabin area, and another one uh, that'll be over the head uh, to give you some breeze in there, and a double derailed box on the starboard side. On the spar, which is in great shape, it looks like a, uh, a Selden or a Proctor spar, uh, and fresh aluminum, no signs of corrosion, adequate winches for the job, and uh, that mast now is stepped on deck. Am I allowed to come in now? I think you could come in now and uh, you can do the limbo yourself on the way back. Hey, Randy. Hey. Come on down, buddy. Oh, thanks. Uh, cozy. Very cozy, you know? What are we missing right off the bat? Uh, a little fireplace? Yeah, oh. <laughs> right now today that would be so perfect. This is a nice saloon on a 33-foot boat. Are you kidding me? This, this is fabulous. Uh, you've got a, a nice dinette for four people, but this will drop down and become a, a double berth. Lots of storage, as we all say. Here's a little drinks locker place to put your bottles. It, they've done this this um, soft, um, not high varnish, what do you call it, satin yes, finish varnish below decks here, which is very appealing. Uh, very Scandinavian, British uh, finish to it. A lot of utility for in these, just like we've seen that on, oh, even a bigger boat, that, uh, that Alden we looked at had step storage. I like step storage. Uh, <clears throat> got that again. There's a little thing here. You gotta be careful. <laughs> they get the nice curvatures. That looks Very like nice. about five seven. I think I'd get a little <laughs> saw it, hack yeah. that off. Anyway, uh, oh, well, uh, look at the depth of this uh, fridge though. Uh, it's, uh, there's no uh, no no. Um, I take a pack. I thought this was, this was just ice box, but this has refrigeration, 12 volt refrigeration. We have a big double set of sinks. Uh, storage behind all the sliders here which slide very nicely uh, even this one down here oh well God. boy over in England do they eat anymore I don't think they do actually I don't think they do. they're very healthy over there uh, shepherd's pie two burner propane stove and um, we haven't spotted the tank storage yet uh, but I think we might eventually uh, anyway with oven it's nice having an oven. Out here, we have an engine on this boat. Yes, we do. There it is. There's the engine room. Boy, we could have lunch down there, couldn't we? Yeah. Is that tidy or what? And that's a, uh, what did I tell you, 90 horsepower? I think so. 90 horsepower Ford. Now, uh, there's room to step down inside there. This one cover we discovered earlier is just a little tricky to get out of the way. Uh, but it's all heavy soundproofing. But that engine has got 2,000 hours on it, but it looks like it, it was just run last summer. That sea strainer looks a little different from what I'm used this to. This guy? Well, yeah. I don't know who manufactures, but I'm going to guess it's probably a uh, English or Scandinavian piece because it sort of has that design look to it. And then I see the Raycor is right next to it. Is this your diesel over here? Yeah, this would be your diesel tank. She carries about... 600 liters. Let's take a look back at the uh, aft cabin now, which happens to be aft of me. Randy. Yeah. Uh, you might remember that just moments ago, I dropped my entire body through this hatch right here. It tells me that I can escape from this compartment in case there's an engine fire. We've got three really large opening uh, side ports here two on port side and one here on starboard and I think we're probably going to find another one uh, right in the room right beside you there because we have in this area back here uh, the owners a little uh, oh. extra head now this is pretty much 
That's interesting on the uh, angle of the hull. And that looks direct overboard, I guess? And that'll go uh, right overboard, yeah. Oh, this is, oh, you're going to like this, Randy. What do we have here for you? Oh, wow. Whoop. Nice and accessible, yeah. Now there's our rudder shaft. Uh, here, this is all a hydraulic system. Here's your Ray Marine uh, rudder sensor right there. All your plumbing, I mean, it's pretty easy to work on. Yeah. What else do we like down here? Uh, let's see, you've got your hydraulic hoses, you've got your exhaust, you've got your emergency tiller. Killer clean. Oh, yeah. Yep, and there's your emergency tiller. Yep, good eye. And that's just going to fit right on top of this. How simple is that? Yeah. The headroom back here is a little bit. It is, it is. You, you put the shorter people back here. Believe it or not, this is a really nice size double right here, but I've got, you know, about 600 square feet of sail wrapped up behind me. And uh, I just give you a little bit of an idea there. So you can see it goes way back in. And uh, these sails are crispy, fresh too. Let me just take a peek over here. I think. There you go. You get an idea of the port lights there, you see? Would you like to take a look at the forward cabin? Yeah, let's go check it out. Randy! Yeah. Come on up. All right. Uh, first of all, this, you know, everything's got to, there's got to be a little give and take with every boat. You know, you got a big wheelhouse on this. You're going to be minimized in some other areas. One of those is the actual room up here in this forward cabin area. But uh, this is kind of surprising. Uh, I'm take a look at this head. Complete with a shower and everything. All right. And nice and clean, easy to wipe down, and big enough for regular human beings, right? Got that retro sink, too. And it had a flat floor. Did you notice that? Across the way, we've got a simple hanging locker uh, set up. There's some, some netting here to keep things from flying out, like your blazers and so on. And then behind me, uh, oh, this is, this is the other thing they do with these things. This is a double-use door. This door will come over. And here, I'll just show you. Oh, very nice. There, look at that. Now you have a, a private forward cabin. Okay, and that is kind of nice. Uh, now, they've, they've taken the... <clears throat> they obviously use this as a double all the time, and they have taken the, uh, um, the, the filler piece and made it sort of semi-permanent. But... Uh, you want to see how big it is? I think we're going to have to, yeah. Okay, gymnastics today. You know what? You even need to get a pillow. Oh, look at that. Ooh, all right. Oh, up and dizzy daisy. He had that big booty butt, you know? I'll put this out here for my feet, because I know there's one guy out there who always says, hey, Captain, you didn't take your shoes off. <laughs> uh, oh. It's usually me. Who <laughs> was? All right. This is very pleasant up here. This is. They've done a great job in this particular boat with whatever they've got under me for mattresses. It's it's just as good as home. And uh, nice tidy overhead. Another big evacuation size hatch. Nice baffled storage areas here. See there's this baffle here so you can put your sweaters and they're not going to fly out. Uh, I like this. Normally I would say let's call it a day. But today we have a little special extra treat for folks. Oh, fun. Why don't we go back to the uh, um, uh, main saloon. All right. Or wherever you want to go and you're happy. And we'll discuss uh, what, would you do, what you would do if you bought this boat. something extra today, kind of fun for us. Uh, the reason we're able to shoot this boat today is that uh, she was recently, had recently gone under contract and the buyer had a survey done on the boat and then asked the boat yard, okay, can you fix some of these things that the survey picked out? And they put together a nice estimate. This boat was on the market for something I think close to $80,000. And uh, the people who had made the offer looked at the estimate and said, oh, that's more than we want to involve ourselves with. And so the owners of the boat have reduced the price to 55000 Now, speaking of the owners of the boat, you should know that the owners of the boat is a nonprofit uh, 
a charitable uh, organization. They will allow you to purchase this boat in three uh, installments. We have been given a series of issues and some prices to attack them. Let me just delve into this for a second. First of all, if you were to buy this boat and have it hauled and have the two masts removed from the boat uh, and prepare the spars for additional work, the yard would charge $3,230. Once they put this boat up on the hard, they've got to move it into a work area and deal with it and, and jack it up and get it all ready again. There's a, uh, a S-bar heater problem, uh, and uh, we did see the controls for that in the after cabin. The S-bar is a great heater. Fix it, make it work, enjoy it, and dry this boat out and, and be really happy. But uh, the art yard will charge you about $1,000, $1,060. Now, the upper helm needs a tune-up uh, for the hydraulics, for the steering system. They want to replace the ram. It's a, a full blown out maintenance thing. And that's going to run about $2,485. Now, in the, uh, the three seacocks outboard of the forward head were in poor visual condition and the uh, handles would not move. That's always something you want to check. Pull and replace those as appropriate with uh, uh, a Groco uh, flange style seacocks and then and backing blocks and all the stuff that's involved with that and that would run about twenty six hundred dollars. The aluminum mast step plate was visually bent. The Nauticat 33's apparently <clears throat> ever since they were born have always had some sort of questionable issue with that and it has to be dealt with. So <clears throat> that will be eight thousand six hundred and thirty dollars. The last item minor soft spots on the starboard side near the shroud area. The uh, decks can be done and dealt with for about another $1,700. Now, all that adds up to a total of $23,000. $23,000, that's $3,000 of parts and $18,000 worth of labor. So, well, yeah, what do you have to do? You've got to do the, the, the mast and the hydraulic steering. You could probably, if you wanted to get away with not doing the decks, you could probably put the you could leave the decks for a season probably, right. and maybe another year or right. two. So once again, we should say and remind you that it's so critical to have a survey. Uh, and because you'll find these items out right off the bat, it costs you a little bit of money, but it's a lot cheaper in the long run to find it out up front rather than down the road. Anyway, I thought this was interesting because we had this document from uh, the good people at Yankee Marina and Boatyard here in Yarmouth. It was quite a boat. I think for a motor sailor, a type, uh, perfect for older couple, maybe even a younger family that just doesn't need to go all the way to Europe everywhere. I'm gonna give it a, a 20 right off the bat because I don't know if it floats, I think it will, but right now I know it gave us protection from this incredibly cold day today. I'm gonna give it another uh, 15 because uh, we know that these boats are good sea boats and that they'll do what they've been designed to do and they've been very successful. I'm gonna stop there because we know some work's gotta be done to this particular boat. So there you go, what do we got, 35? Yeah. And uh, for a 1984 naughty, <laughs> naughty, naughty 33-foot uh, catch. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>